Okay, hey everybody, welcome to another episode of On The Wrist from Off The Cuff. Today we have a very, very special review for you of this piece right here, my own personal Grand Seiko. And this is a newer Grand Seiko to my collection, but an older Grand Seiko in terms of when it was released. This is actually kind of a long lost grail for me, and it's gonna be a little bit different than your typical review. Maybe I'll still do a regular dedicated review, but I did wanna kind of do a bit of telling the story of this timepiece to you guys, because it is something that I did watch and I saw in a video uh, on YouTube, of course, by Patrick Marlett, now of worn and wound fame, uh, but before that, he actually had his own channel, uh, which is uh, Taking Time with Pat, and he showcased this bad boy on there, and I instantly kind of fell in love, went down the rabbit hole, kind of searching, learning more and more about the bracelet, about all the little details, eventually getting to the point to where it was like, all right, let's go look for this thing out on the market. And unfortunately, I just could not find any good examples of it. So I pretty much gave up on this piece. I mean, I loved it. Uh, it was kind of a grail, but I had kind of come to accept that I will probably never own this piece and probably never even see one in the metal. Now, flash forward to this year in 2023, of course, I've been doing these collaborations with Belmont Watches, which they're a fantastic dealer here locally in San Diego. They lend in watches. I'm always kind of scouring their site and lo and behold, they have one of these listed for sale. I immediately, I'm like, let me see that thing. Uh, you know, I want to feature it. And you know, the more time that I spent with it, much like the first Grand Seiko that I actually purchased, um, it was actually after a review I did for them, but it was a green dial variation and I ended up purchasing the blue dial. In this case, it was the exact dial that I wanted, um, the exact model in amazing condition, guys. I mean, the condition on this piece, if I can, I gotta make sure that my face isn't getting the camera to lock on it, but it's absolutely breathtaking. So some of you are probably thinking, what's the big deal? Why is this watch so important? Well. It's kind of combines two really iconic Seikos that already exist. Uh, specifically, two huge kind of JDM gems and classics from the Sarb line. First of all, the Sarb 017, which is the uh, Alpinist, and then the Sarb 035, which is its kind of brethren in it. It's interesting because those two watches, right, you take this watch and it's a little bit comparable to an Explorer. Those two watches kind of split this watch in half. One of them is on the dressier side, the other is on the sportier side. They're just more dedicated. But if you were to mesh those two together, actually let me grab those two for you. If you mesh these two watches together, guys, uh, let me see if I can get the uh, good old camera to focus, here we go. So if you mesh these two, you know, Titans together here, um, you kinda, you, you take the dressy elements, you take, of course, the sporty elements, you blend in numerals and batons, you take those beautiful rounded finishes there, the case contours, You of course you gotta dial it up a couple of notches, right? And really let the Grand Seiko craftsman run with it. I mean, you look at this bracelet individually pieced together, fully articulated, about seven individual pieces all together when you break down each link. So this is very, very complex. And it was such a huge flex for Seiko back in the day. Grand Seiko now, of course, now that they're uh, independent here in the States. But uh, even then, uh, this was really just an exhibition of what they could do. And this was coming out of a time, you know, in the early 2000s where in the late 90s, once Grand Seiko was kind of brought back, there was it was mostly quartz. So this was one of the first kind of mechanical, uh, you know, ones. And then also it was one of the first to really uh, accentuate the pattern texture dial, which Grand Seiko today is really known for, right? So these two pieces kind of put together, make this one, and somehow it becomes the ultimate Japanese, uh, you know, Rolex Explorer alternative being dressy, having that mixture of numerals, 200 meters of water resistance on this piece, guys. So really a lot to love, and I did wanna share that with you guys. Oh yeah, Belmont watches. So uh, I have the piece, you know, unbox it, fall in love with it immediately. I'm just like, guys, I 
I need this watch. So lucky for me, because I didn't have, you know, an extra couple of thousand bucks laying around, I did have a couple of watches. And when you deal with watch dealers, the nice thing is you can make trades, guys. So that was how this piece came, uh, you know, into the collection was I, I made some trades. Um, so you'll probably see some of those watches uh, listed here at some point on their site. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited to share this one with you guys. So let's go ahead um, and get into uh, you know some other shots, flip the camera around, and kind of talk about some other aspects of this outstanding piece. Okay guys, let's just take a look at this bad boy. Check it out. Just kills it. I mean, in a very simple outfit, guys, here. Just a very basic L.L. Bean gray, you know, typical Heather Gray sweater, blue jeans, you know, pretty classic, very versatile. Then you have something like this that just steps it up a notch. You get that mixture of kind of the dressy, sporty, ultimately capable kind of one watch type of deal. And I really, really love this thing. Look at how it presents. Of course, got my little EDC buddy here with me from uh, Tactile Knife Company. If you haven't watched the full review, definitely check that out. But I did want to kind of share just some other angles, some other takes with you guys because this watch just deserves uh, special coverage for what it is. I mean, it's a discontinued model from the early 2000s and I just can't get enough of it. I'm gonna take a step back here. So we get lens lens distortion there, you can see how it presents on the wrist. Really gorgeous, guys. So let's uh, let's see what else we can do here. All right, guys, check this thing out. Absolutely gorgeous. It just sets itself off. Uh, it's just ultimately versatile, which I love. And you guys know I have a ton of watches. I think about the capability with that screw down crown. I think about, of course, that nice four hertz sweeping movement, uh, the history around Grand Seiko, how popular it is today. And then of course, just uh, Seiko in general and everything that that entails and being a fan of Seiko. And it's just something that's a very special piece to me uh, that I'm really excited to share with you guys. Uh, man, I just can't get enough of this thing. <laughs> What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. This thing is just gorgeous. So there's no loom shots, of course, because uh, yeah, there's no loom on this piece. That's the one thing that I think really separates it from the Sarb line uh, is that it does go that other direction. But with the amount of reflections you're gonna be able to get off of these highly polished uh, indices there, uh, they're just fantastic against that nice, uh, you know, snow white dial. No, it's not a snowflake effect. It's actually a kind of a hex weave pattern meant to look like a white carbon fiber stitch. So it's very, very cool, very different, but the color itself is a true white dial. Uh, so it's not going to be a pale silver or a kind of lighter creamy tone. This thing uh, is a nice stark white color. Uh, and then you just kind of add that depth by having those outstanding, uh, you know, the pattern there and that texture and it's just something special guys i really dig that and um, i'm curious <laughs> you guys probably think i'm a little uh, crazy a little zany but yeah i mean the cool thing is this is a piece that i again i had just gone down the rabbit hole with lusted after for so long and then kind of gave up on uh but then was able to thanks to the team over at belmont watches uh so that's one of the great things about working with an aftermarket dealer you know they're going to be able to find used pieces uh and then they of course i even had my vintage uh rolex Air King, that's a family heirloom that was passed down uh, from my mom uh, and her mom before her, uh, down to my daughter, I had it serviced through them and their team. So it was just, you know, it was one of those things where you can pull the trigger on things uh, where you trust somebody, right? You're not just buying the product, you're buying the seller. And I just can't uh, thank the team over at Belmont Watches enough. Uh, so 
you definitely look forward to seeing more collaborations with them in the future. This piece, it's very interesting that, of course, I am so nuts about this piece, and it's kind of an Explore 1 alternative. And then my other Grand Seiko is an Explore 2 alternative. Uh, so I, I don't know. There's something about that. Maybe I'll do another segment about that. Uh, but with that said, let's go ahead and flip the camera around one more time. Okay, guys. Now you know I couldn't leave you without a tabletop shot. And although I think I will do a dedicated review for this uh, piece just because I love it so much, which I actually haven't even told you guys the exact nomenclature yet, although. I'm sure it'll be inside the description. I think I should verbally say that this is the Grand Seiko SBGR017. And uh, on its left and right flanks here, you can see the Sarb uh, 035 and the Sarb 017. And these two, again, just to kind of get some comparisons here, these two very iconic kind of enthusiast uh, driven watches, uh, I think they kind of split the difference. If this watch, if this Grand Seiko was, you know, more tool-like, it would be something along the lines of this Alpinist. If it was, uh, you know, more on the dressy side, it would be a little bit more similar to this Saab Zero uh, Three Five. And uh, there's nothing wrong with these watches. They're a little aged. They're a little old compared to some of the cooler, newer, uh, higher spec models that are out there. Even this Grand Seiko itself is a little older. It does have the older movement in the 9S55, which is going to be more comparable to what you would find on the inside of something like a Marine Master. 300 uh, but this still is of course within that regulation window of plus five to minus three seconds per day in accuracy it has a 50 hour power reserve versus the more modern uh, 72 hour power reserve uh, but this still has the four hertz beat rate and this is keeping outstanding time for me and yeah i i love this thing to bits but i did want to show you guys a nice close-up of that dial texture because it's just that cool. Check that out. Again, this was just ahead of its time. This was during a space where Grand Seiko and Seiko in general, they hadn't really uh, embraced their place as just kind of the textured dial manufacturers of our time. Uh, but uh, it's nice to see that these early grumblings, they were always capable of it, maybe not quite as committed to it, but definitely capable. You see all these great shapes here. You see the bevels up close. My goodness, look at this profile on this case. Yeah, it is a little bit on the thicker side at about 13.3 millimeters thick. Oh, look at that full articulation. You can get a kink in it once in a while. Um, so you know, a little bit on the thicker side, but look at the way that it hides that thickness, that mid case with the beautiful hairline brushing, nice and fine. And then you do have a little bit of case back sticking out, but the case on the underside, it still has a lot of care in terms of, let me just give it a quick little wipe here. If I could find a little microfiber cloth, here we go. So there's still even a lot of care on the underside as to how beautiful this thing is. Check that out. Look at the facets, the shapes. Look at that medallion just glistening even after all these years, guys. Uh, you know, it's, it's pretty wild. Uh, and it's nice to see that this... Zeratsu polishing can age very well and very fine because I know that's some a lot of folks biggest drawback is you have this thing that is so focused on perfection. How do you uh, you know how do you wear that because then you could damage the perfection by scratching it, nicking it, you know, dulling that beautiful uh, distortion-free mirrored finish there from those artisans uh, at the Grand Seiko. Uh, studio, but uh, you can see this one years and years later, early 2000s. It's 2023 now, and this thing looks gorgeous. And I'm excited to know that it's going to keep looking outstanding and immaculate. Although uh, this thing gets worn a lot, guys. I, I love this because it's everything I love about Seiko. But it has that subtle flex appeal. We love a subtle flex. We don't want an all-out flex, right? I don't need to have. Uh, iced out diamond encrusted anything uh, you know yellow gold I don't need all that it's the subtle flex it's from far away you know it's quality
quality from up close, then you're slapped in the face with the quality. And that's something that Grand Seiko will always have uh, above your typical luxury wristwatch brand. Even more successful luxury wristwatch brands uh, won't be able to have that subtle flex that Grand Seiko has just done such an amazing job with so with that said guys uh thank you for hanging out with me thank you to belmont watches of course for inspiring this episode so if you are whether you're just looking for inventory or you're searching for your grail let those guys know because they uh they could be on the hunt they might just glaze over something they might think it's very niche and never even know that it's something that you wanted. But if you let them know, they can find it for you guys. Uh, so lucky for me, Belmont Watches accidentally found my Grail watch. So with that said, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. If you liked the video, please do it like. And if you haven't already, please subscribe for more content just like this. Thanks, guys.